Um, there's going to be two types of problems that are possible, ones that are nice to graph and ones that are not nice to graph. This is one where it's not nice to graph. Well, we're going to also do one that is nice to graph, so you'll see the difference. The sad thing is the book wants you to graph them all, uh, which means you'll need a calculator for certain parts of it. We'll probably get through A and B. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait for C and D for next class. However, parts A and B are intermediate algebra. They are nothing new. So please be careful. In part A, find the domain. How do you find the domain of a rational function? See where the denominator equals 0. How does x squared minus 4x minus 21 factor? Good. So that would say x cannot equal uh, 7, and x cannot equal negative 3. Oh, I forgot that not equals 2. Intercepts, with two types, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. Typically, the x-intercepts are the harder ones. An x-intercept occurs when the function equals what? When the function equals 0. Our function is a fraction. A fraction equals 0 when what equals 0? The numerator, the top. So the denominator is not going to help us with our x-intercepts. So if we set the numerator equal to 0, and we solved for the x, what do we get for x? Yep. 2x plus 5, x plus 1. So this implies that x equals negative 5 halves, and x equals negative 1. So please write your intercepts as ordered pairs. So you'll say negative 5 halves comma 0, negative 1 comma 0. More factoring. Comment. Your domain dictates a lot of things here. If you found a number that's in this list, your x-intercept list, that is also in your, not in your domain list, could it possibly be an x-intercept? Nope. It has to be in the domain to be an x-intercept. Other comment. If you did find such a number, like if negative 3 also appeared in your x-intercept, then what does that mean occurs at negative 3? It's a whole, because it's a number that makes the denominator and the numerator equal to 0. Mm. Y-intercepts occur when the variable is set equal to zero. Now, here's the deal. Biggest mistake students make is that they forget x-intercepts only deal with the numerator. A y-intercept goes back to the entire function. So if you stick in zero in for all the x's, what are you going to get in the numerator? Num just the numerator. You got excited. Five in the denominator. There you go. So what order pair is this? Yep. So again, x-intercepts, only in the numerator. Y-intercepts, the entire function. We're going to save C and D for Thursday, but the comment I want to make is, based on what we have for parts A and B alone, we already know the answer for part C. So I want you to think about why we should know. And in the meantime, also think about what your answer for D is going to be based on your four cases. Previously in math class, we did math. Let's continue where we left off. All right. That's better. I'll stick with the blue. 
I said the sum right. To find a domain of a rational function, set the denominator equal to zero. Whatever you get, you don't want. Intercepts. X-intercepts occur when the numerator equals zero. Make sure that your answer is in the domain. If it's not, it's not an x-intercept. Write your answer as an ordered pair. Y-intercept, put in zero into the entire function. Also write your answer as an ordered pair. Um, if zero was not in the domain, could you have y-intercepts? Half of you is correct. No, you can't. If zero is not in the domain, then you can't put zero in for x. And that's how you find a y-intercept. Yeah. All right, let's talk about vertical asymptotes and holes. Vertical asymptotes and holes occur when you find where the denominator is zero and plug those numbers into the numerator. If only there was a part where we already found what numbers make the denominator zero. Part A, the domain. So numbers not in the domain of a rational function are going to lead to vertical asymptotes and holes. Numbers not in the domain of a rational function. What a great fill in the blank this would be on a test. Lead to vertical asymptotes and holes. So step one, remember, was find the numbers that make the denominator zero. Check, that's seven and negative three. Step two, plug those numbers into the numerator. If we plug seven into the numerator, does this equal zero? Nope. So what occurs at x equals seven? Which type? Vertical asymptote. Uh-huh. So please make sure you declare which type, because there's three types of asymptotes that we know of. If you stick a negative 3 into the numerator, do you get 0? Is that zero? No. So what occurs at x equals negative three? Vertical asymptote. Remember, if you get a whole, that's where you have to factor and cancel the common term. That's my Arnold. That's what he always sounds like. And I would tell that to his face. And by face, I mean 100 feet away. But you can, you're right. At most, you can have one horizontal or oblique. You can't have both a horizontal and oblique. All right, so for a horizontal and oblique asymptote, it's all about the degree. What's the degree of the numerator? Two. What's the degree of the denominator? So what case are we in? Same answer. Two. Two. So it's the uh, ratio of leading coefficients. What's the leading coefficient on the numerator? Denominator, its ratio, 2 over 1, is 2. So y equals 2 is the horizontal asymptote. Do not say 2 is the horizontal asymptote. 2 is a number, not an equation of a line. That would be bad. So we're not going to graph this one because it's icky sticky. The numbers aren't that nice, but in the next one, it is quite nice.